everyone is different. Not everyone is called to be, as I said earlier, in the, in the fray. That, that it, it, but there are people who are called to it. And when they shrink from it, I think God holds them accountable because they're the voices God's counting on. I mean, I think of, uh, for example, journalists. I think of pastors. Uh, if you're called to be a leader, you're in the position of, of being a leader, people are looking to you for cues. Uh, and if you never mention something, they can assume certain things. Um, the misattribution that you, you mentioned, it's never happened to me in my life, so I feel like this must be a rite of passage, but it was so horrifying to me to read that uh, some major Australian paper had said that I said that uh, gay activists or the Nazis of our time or blah, 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 blah. And I thought, this is madness. No one interviewed me for the article. They took something that I said and twisted it far out of context, and suddenly it becomes published fact, quote unquote, and people are attacking me for it, and I never said it. And I think that people, I'm sure people go through this all the time. This is kind of a standard thing in the world, but to have it happen to, to you it is, uh, it's a little shocking, because I, I guess I have more faith in the world of journalism. Like, they, they really wouldn't do that. Only the, the, the most horrible papers would do such a thing. So when a mainstream paper does it, what I think it does is it, it confirms the, um, the bias that is there, that, that people are now, they're not even trying to hide it. They're not even giving a pretense of fairness. They're simply doing, it's, it's like activist journalism, which is really not journalism. What was the point you were trying to make that's been misattributed? Well, there's, there are a few points. When I wrote my book on Bonhoeffer, now Bonhoeffer, of course, it's all about the 30s and the Nazis. So this is, uh, I've been marinating in that universe, right? And so as I was reading that, I mean, as I was doing my research, I realized that when the state becomes powerful, it, uh, it often bullies the church, right? That's exactly what happened in Germany. They weren't prepared for it. The values of the Nazi state, uh, and this is long before the Holocaust. I mean, the Nazis were jerks from the beginning, but they were not guilty of the Holocaust in 1933. Um, they hadn't even thought of it yet, right? But they were still all about power and the state and they saw the church as an obstacle. They said, this church needs to be defanged, it needs to be co-opted. We cannot allow it to flourish as an independent voice. That's going to be dangerous and threatening to us. So we need to crush it, we need to figure out, and they, they were very clever about how they did it, but we've got to neutralize the church. Bonhoeffer understood that this is wrong, and it was this wrong in a number of levels. In, in the United States, I would say it's wrong because we have the separation of church and state, so we have this idea that the church is meant to be the conscience of the state, not to be in bed with the state, cozy with the state, but to be the conscience of the state. When the state does something wrong, the church has an independent voice to say, that is wrong. Um, Bonhoeffer saw that the, the state, for the first time in German history, at least in re more recent German history, was, um, was in fact trying to co-opt the church and to take, basically to take over the church. And he saw it and he said, this is not healthy. The church must be the conscience of the state, must have the freedom to speak out against the abuses of the state. If the state is trying to push the church to accept uh, national socialist values, we must say, no, we are the church of Jesus Christ. We've existed for 2000 years. These are our values. Um, so to me, the parallel that I see in the West, certainly in the United States, is that for the first time uh, in the 200 plus years of the existence of the United States, the government was doing what we call in our constitution the establishment of a religion, where they begin taking positions on, on these big issues uh, against the traditional church. And they begin pushing hard and saying, if you have these values, we're, we're going to push you out of the mainstream. We're going to label you a bigot. We're going to fine you. If you don't go along with us on this, this, this. And to my mind, it has to be the role of the church to say, no, you cannot do that. We are the church. We have absolute freedom. Uh, in, in the U.S. Constitution, it's enshrined. It's, it's religious liberty is at the heart of all liberties. Religious liberty, uh, uh, the freedom of the press, freedom of conscience, that people are free to believe whatever they like and to act on it, you know, up to, up to a point, right? And the question is, what is that point? Well, the government is trying to say, well, that point is here. And the church is saying, no, 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 that the point is here. We are free to exercise our faith. You cannot force us to accept 
uh, this view of sexuality when for 2,000 years we've believed this. Um, that's, that's not right. You should at least give us a hearing and we should have a civil conversation about it. But the government uh, and the culture, of course, uh, have been very, very heavy handed about this. And I see this here in Australia, you see it in Europe, where they basically say, we're not interested in having a conversation. You're a bigot, shut up and get out of the way. And I think to myself, that's exactly what happened in Germany in the 30s. You had the, the church suddenly having to deal with something they'd never dealt with before. They were not used to dealing with it, so they didn't know how to deal with it. So half of them, or more than half of them, said, well, we don't want to argue, let's just let this one go, or um, that's outside of the realm of our faith, that's more of a political thing, and you, and you think, well, wait a minute. <laughs> it's always been uh, unavoidable that people of conscience must be involved politically. When Wilberforce, about whom I wrote another book, um, saw the evil of the slave trade. It was because of his faith in Jesus, in the God of the Bible, that he spoke against the slave trade and acted against the slave trade. And tons of people in his day despised him for bringing his faith into the public square. How dare you bring your faith into the public square? And he said, what can I do? I believe that the God of the Bible says I'm supposed to treat other human beings with love, with civility, with, with justice. Therefore, the slave trade is an abomination. And therefore, I as a politician will do all I can with all my might and main to stand against the slave trade. But tons of people said, You're, that's out of bounds. Faith should be a private thing. Similarly, Bonhoeffer faced that uh, in his day where many pastors said, you, you shouldn't get involved politically. It's not your business. Just pray and teach your colleagues to pray and don't do anything about it. And he said, so I'm supposed to sit by while Jews are being transported in boxcars to Treblinka and Auschwitz? Really? As a Christian, you think God would have me to do that? I think we're in the same position. You know, it doesn't need to be compared to the slave trade or to, um, to the death camps. But the principle is the same, that when people tell the church to shut up, suddenly I say, uh, something's going on here, and I will not shut up, and I will exhort the church not to shut up and to stand up for what it believes in. If people don't like it, they have never liked it, and they don't like it because it threatens something that they feel very, uh, very strongly about. But it's the job of the church to speak up, and we must speak up. And as I say, when I'm told to shut up, I know, I, I, I say, that's the... That's the um, that's the sign that the other side is really afraid of an actual conversation.